Our text today is from the Old Testament reading of Judges in the second chapter. And when they were greatly distressed, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. These verses give us an overview of the entire book of Judges. The period spans 400 years, from the death of the soldier Joshua to the days of the first king of Israel. These pages describe a very chaotic and stormy period in Israel's history. They speak to us of examples of outstanding courage individual heroism. But there are also scenes here of bloodshed and brutality, of moral perversion and unspeakable cruelty. And this poses a problem to many people. They cannot harmonize these hard facts with the sweet teachings of Jesus. But the Bible tells us what actually happened. Not what you and I think should happen. There is no attempt to whitewash the record here, to glorify the past of God's people, to present them in the best favorable light. If the woman jail invites a soldier into her tent and drives a tent stake through his skull, the Bible says so. And if the great strong man Samson is brought down by consorting with an expensive call girl, the Bible says so. And I don't know how we of our generation can be shocked by these stories. With two world wars in our century, with the atrocities of Southeast Asia and Europe still fresh in our minds, with hideous crimes in all of their lurid details described in our daily newspaper, they're part of America's history, like it or not. And we cannot pick and choose out of Scripture only what pleases us and discard what jars our sensibility. These 12 tribes were to take possession of the land allotted to them, expel the remaining Canaanite nations, and establish themselves as one people under God. To Israel, the true religion was absolutely a requirement. For them, there could be no lack of allegiance to their Lord. By faith, they entered into the promised land, and only by faith would they stay in the promised land. And the faith of yesteryear, of days gone by, doesn't help. It must be a current faith. If they compromise with the heathen, make concessions to the pagan, allow the spirit in which they entered that land to decay, they will be destroyed. They will conquer the Canaanite nations, or the Canaanite nations will conquer them. But the true faith and the false cannot coexist, one or the other. And so the old soldier Joshua told them when he mustered out his troops for the last time, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods which your father served on the other side of the river, or whether it be the gods of the Canaanite nations among whom ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, one or the other, but never both. As Christ says, no man can serve two masters. 
But the people quickly grew weary of the task. They came to terms with the enemy. They settled down among the Canaanite nations, intermingled and intermarried with them, and adopted their ways. They did not officially renounce the Lord. They just combined his religion with the pagan ceremonies of those among whom they dwelt. So we are told they forsook the Lord God of their fathers which brought them up out of the land of Egypt. And they went a whoring after other gods. See, that surprises us. To hear the Lord speak of his relationship to his people in lover's language. The intimate, passionate language of a man for a woman. We are far more nonchalant about our commitment to the Lord. We view it more as a casual deity, a kind of going steady, but never with unto death us to part. Well, the Lord looks upon our tawdry and cheap little affairs with the world as adultery and infidelity. Speaks to us. As though we were his beloved, his betrothed, his bride. And he will brook no rivals for our attention or affection. So, these verses tell us, begin the pattern that will follow over and over again. Unfaithfulness. Punishment, penitent, deliverance. But when the people fall away from the Lord, they will be oppressed by their enemies. And when they come to their senses, they will turn back to the Lord. The Lord will then send judges to deliver them. And they will remain faithful as long as the judge lives. But at his death, they will relapse into their former ways, and the whole monotonous cycle will repeat itself once more. And so the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of those that would oppress them. The kings of Mesopotamia and Moab and Canaan into the hands of the mountaineers of Ammon, Bedouin tribes of Midian and the fierce and unrelenting Philistines. Some people say that war is proof that there is no God. The Bible says that war is proof that there is a God. The Almighty repeatedly tells us he will use one nation to punish another nation. And Moses plainly told his people they would be no exception if they broke faith with the Lord. We do not escape the consequences of our sin. In fact, God guarantees them. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And the wages of sin is death, he tells us. So, the people were greatly distressed, and then shamed and humiliated. At the bottom of the well, when they had no one left to turn to, then they turned back to God, and the Lord raised up judges to deliver them. These judges were not civil magistrates sitting in a courtroom as American judges might be administering justice. These judges were deliverers, saviors, 
courageous men and women and God with the Holy Spirit set free their people. There are 12 of them in number. Mighty souls who strode across the pages of history whose exploit still inspire and steady and strengthen faint-hearted people to the present day. Some names you will remember. Deborah, the strong man Samson, the warriors Gideon and Jephthah, and others you may not. The farm boy Shamgar, and the left-handed Ehud. But is there not a similar pattern in your life and mine? Please, have not our own unbelief and disobedience brought us to the same realization of our insufficiency and our helplessness? Isn't failure also a tool that God uses to purify us? Is not defeat for us a deep mind in which we dig our insights Strength that we never had before. A desert is defeat for us, out of whose bleached and sandy soil come fruits of patience and compassion. Failure may interrupt us in our forward progress, but it will also improve what is vastly more important for us. A right relationship with God again and our eternal destiny. And so for us, the book of Judges is the story of God's saving, helping, redeeming power to free his people. God reaches out he delivers, he helps, he gives people a second chance, a fresh start, a new beginning. Because of God, the unfaithful can become faithful again. And the fallen can struggle to their feet. And the lost be found and the wanderer return back to his home. This book is telling us that God can bring order and peace into our confused and restless lives. He can take his disorganized and scattered sheep and unify them into one people. He can take souls that are suspicious and despairing or proud and make of them a monument of his own grace. God raised up judges to deliver them. As God saved Israel, God still saved. Again and again. You might say, he uses no other way, he has no other way to save. God leads through human leaders, through men and women who follow him. The old song verse says it true. Christ has no hand but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet to lead men in the way. He has no tongue but our tongues to tell men why he died. He has no help but our help to lead men to his side. I think you will identify with the ups and downs of the people described in this book. For it is so much like our own struggles also. Oh, the battles are brief. But brother, the war goes on. The youth 
struggles to grow up, to choose the right vocation, to find his niche in life. Then comes the ongoing struggle, supporting your family, making gold things, keep your head above water. And then there are the surprise attacks nobody told you about. The staggering effect of a lingering illness. Or the loss of a loved one in long seasons of bereavement. Or the feeling of loneliness when you stand for your principles and then find yourself standing all alone. The book of Judges will tell you that the punishment is not the last chapter. No. Salvation is the last chapter for those who hold to him. And we receive this notice. The Lord then refused to drive out the Canaanite nation. He would let them stay. Through Israel. Put them to the test. To try them. And that temptation seems to me too dangerous of an experiment. When you think of the tension between believer and unbeliever, the friction between church and the world, the pressures that you people are under from those who live around you, their gods and their goals and their guidelines, the temptation is strong that you will cave in. Ah, but you might also be strengthened. Competition can make you strong. A life that is always isolated and protected and defended can never stand on its own. It becomes weak and ineffectual. It is only as we are challenged that we grow up and mature as we face the tests and the tight spots of life. As parents rear children, so God does his people. You could protect your toddler from all the bumps and bruises of falling, all of the scrapes and the tears by carrying the child. But then, the child will never learn to walk. What kind of spineless and flabby people would we become if we were never challenged? If we never faced the hard knocks of life? Christ Jesus is the master comforter. He is the friend and companion beyond compare. But Jesus never bribed his followers with a promise that they could escape stress and pain. The reverse is true. He calls upon us to grow up, to become men and women. Instead of these sniveling, bleeding creatures who can't take what life has to throw at them. My goodness, people. It is a precious thing the Lord is doing for us. All that is noble in us has been hammered into us by the hard things by things that we would have avoided if only we could, but we couldn't. And that night, when his friends wanted him to save his life, Jesus said, The cup which my Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? 
why we can catch something on that down here. With head up, eyes steady, hearts unafraid. Face the road that runs before us. Amen.